G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach for DR and welcome to a very, very special video today. We have the St Kilda team preview for 2023. You know the man that's next to me there, Spills. Spills, how you going, mate? How are things, buddy? Very good, mate. Um, yeah, been looking forward to this podcast for quite a long time. It's an understatement to say that. Thank you very much for jumping on, Scoops. I haven't met you right. yet and I'm bloody keen to have a chat and dabble into some St Kilda stuff. So yeah, it should be good, boys. Hey, well, thanks for good. having me on, guys. I'll tell you what, I need to, to give a bit of an introduction here because we do have the sole admin of AFL Information, Trade Rumours and Results, a man with over 52,000 Facebook followers. He's been running that page for 10 years now. So coming up to his 10th anniversary, absolutely phenomenal stuff for the community, a talented cricketer, eligible bachelor, and in my opinion, one of the most underrated journalists out there. His hosts, well, podcasts, videos. He's got a YouTube channel, interviewed Sarah Ollie, even Collingwood coach Craig McRae. So this bloke has done it all. And those blokes like the purple-headed warrior, Damian Barrett, calculating Cal Toomey. I don't reckon I've got anything on this bloke. So without further ado, please welcome my man, Scoops. How you going, mate? Thank you very much for joining us, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Yes, it's been, been in the works for a while, so glad to come on finally. It's, it's, it's been a dream to have you on, mate, because we've obviously been following you for, for a very, very long time. And we know that you're obviously a really, really keen St Kilda fan. So when we were discussing who to possibly ask to come on to do the St Kilda team preview, you are the first name that certainly came to our minds. So, uh, look, thanks very much again for coming on, mate. But, look, we might just open this up with a few St Kilda-related questions. Let's start off with who is your favourite St Kilda player of all time? Who's number one for you, Scoops? It's a well, normally it's a tough one, right? For the best of all, favorite of all time, I probably have to go no further than Nick Rewald. Obviously, Rui's been a champion full forward for a long time and for throughout his whole career. And uh, it's fair to say, I probably never said this before, but of all the people that have retired, especially in the last or well, last 10 years or so, there's only two people that probably not not cried, but you know, teared up a little bit in their last game. One was Lenny Hayes, and the other was Nick Rewald. And that that one probably got to me the most because I was actually at the game. Lenny Hayes' last game was at the Adelaide Opals. I obviously didn't attend that one, but Rui's last game was at the G against his cousin Jack. And uh, yeah, it was a bit, uh, a little bit teary in that one. Uh, couldn't believe he was done. And uh, he honestly could have kept playing for a while, but he didn't. But yeah, he's my favourite of all time. Oh, fair. Two, two ripper choices. And I must admit mm. that they're probably two of my favourite St Kilda players of all time as yeah. well. Lenny Hayes and just such a, a, a tough player, but also mm. a ripping bloke as well. Just seems like a really nice character, a great yeah. leader as well. We'll go down in my book anyway as an absolute champion of the game. How, how about your current favourite St Kilda player, mm. someone that's currently on the list in 2023, Scoops? Yeah. It, honestly, uh, it's very hard for me now to pick a favourite. Um, I've Mixed between, I wouldn't say I've got had one and then changed. It's more of an even balance, probably between Jack Steele, the skipper, um, uh, Jay Gresham, Jack Billings, Maxi King, Kungo Bas King, man. And uh, now, probably people may know why, Mateus Filippo. I've got his name right. Um, obviously, the young gun dot drafted for the Saints. And uh, obviously, I had him, had him on my podcast twice. And I've been chatting to him ever since, well before he got drafted. And uh, we've become good friends now as well. So, I've got to choose Filippo as well. Lovely. That is magnificent. That's, mm. That was going to be one of our questions, actually. We are yeah. happy with selecting Philip. So I, I think the mm. question has been answered right there. You're obviously wrapped yeah. with uh, getting him into the side. Oh, I am. Absolutely, I am. Uh, it was actually all the talk around the last month heading into the draft. That first, it was like, oh, he's no chance. He'll go to around Essendon's pick. Hawthorne could be in the mix. And the closer it got to the draft here, they were talking. It was either Essendon or St Kilda that more than likely the Eagles, Geelong, and I think it was Hawthorne in the middle were going to pass on him. And, adventure somewhere else. And I thought on draft night, I was still nervous. And speaking of Mateus, he still wasn't sure at the time whether it'd be oh, Essendon or wow. St Kilda at that stage. So he wasn't yeah, in the, he was kept out of the loop for that as well. So yeah, I was wrapped when uh, the Saints was the club. Once Elijah Stardust was picked by Essendon, I thought, here we go, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it did. So it was great to see. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah, because his, his potential good, yeah. is off the tap. Scoops, you're obviously a massive cricket fan as well. I've got to ask, so... Kane Corns spoke on SEN on Sports Day saying that India were a bunch of cheats because of the state of their wicket. What are your thoughts on that? Was that a fair call or um, can that be justified? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the wicket? Uh, a bit of both. Kane, Kane, the old volcano, he loves to dramatise a lot of things up and uh, mm. make it as worse. Look, it is poor, but then in the end, both sides are playing on it. 
They, a lot of the Australian players have played IPL, so they can't get used to it. They played test matches against India. They played one days. So a lot of these players, in fact, probably all of them have played in India in some form before. So they got accustomed to the conditions. And again, both sides are playing on it. So it's not like, you know, it's been hit in the pitch and it's not been unveiled to game day. But yeah, it's a bit average. But again, both are playing on it and they've played in those conditions plenty of times before, especially the veterans of the side. Yeah. And how about the omission of Travis? Bit of a head scratcher. <laughs> Good work there. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Actually, at my career, yes, a lot of people are having a debate about that. Going, oh, how could you leave him in? Uh, how could you not have him in? And then some are saying he's not great against spin bowls, and that's what the pitch is. It is a tough one. I mean, I'm on the fence with that one. I, if you go by form, then absolutely he should have been in. People said about Renshaw Hanscom. I'm not too sure that was the right move, but then mm. again, I suppose if you're not custom to certain conditions and Trevor said hasn't obviously got good form in those conditions it's kind of a tough one if it was flipped the other way around if it was before he had his good form then it'd be a no-brainer because he had his good form that's where you have the question I suppose they could have given him the first go and then if he failed well then then you could have swapped him for wrench or, or handsome or whoever they were going to put it in place of him yeah got Great another summary. one for scoops um sure. is, has, has Todd Murphy outgoated Scotty Boland it's Ooh. funny, I also brought this up yesterday at cricket yesterday as well. Um, I suppose he probably has, but then again, there's gonna be a lot of pressure on him now that he got that seven far in the first innings as well. So uh he probably has for now. Lee. They're both Victorians, so I mean people will probably be fifty fifty split on both of them. But uh Todd Murphy will probably wanna have to back it up. And even if he does it in this test series, I'm not discrediting his work. He's probably going to have to do it in other non-favoured spin wicket conditions as well to probably out-goat, as you say, um, Scotty <laughs> Boland. But it, we'll have to probably wait and see after this test series. If he can keep it up in this test series, I would say it's in the good spot at the moment. But if he then goes to different conditions and fails or drops off, then probably not. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't just have great knowledge on AFL, but there's a display... <laughs> this man's great knowledge on cricket as well. One other topic mm. I quickly want to bring up uh, sure. as well, Scoops, before we get into the super coach side of things is your love yep. for wrestling as well. So yeah. I was a really big fan when I grew up in the eighties, my favorite of all time was the ultimate warrior. I just loved yep. his, his entrance way came into the ring. Unfortunately, not with, with us anymore, but mm. how about yourself? Who's your favorite all time wrestler? Because I know that you're a pretty big fan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny. This is now maybe a little controversial as well. It used to be CM Punk, but was I kind of started watching here in Australia when it was more CM Punk, Jeff Hardy, John Cena type fuse. So that one of the ones that I first remember that was one of my favorites was that John Cena, CM Punk cash in that, or not cash in that money in the bank pay per view when C, uh, when yeah Cena lost to CM Punk. CM Punk ran away with the con uh, ran away with the title kissed it goodbye to Vince McMahon and then ran off. I know that was storyline reasons, but that was probably one of my favorites. And then since he's left, uh, obviously he had a lot of backlash against WWE and uh, I don't know if I can say he crapped all over the company and then he just left very poorly. Um, you can say about his injuries and that, but uh, and then once he joined the rivals, which I don't like at all, um, <laughs> he then just continued and continued to crap on WWE and I changed very quickly from him during that period he was away and, when he came back to AEW, I definitely jumped off him and wasn't even interested in him anymore. And then uh, my other real-time favourite was the rated-R superstar, Edge. Ah, very good. A few good trios there, isn't there, Spills? Spills, you have been into the wrestling yourself, mate? Look, honestly, not not a great deal. I, I used to get into a bit of, like, UFC-type stuff. But, look, I never mm. followed it anywhere near as heavy as you do. I've seen all the the merchandise and figurines you've got your joint dr so um yeah nothing to that extent but um yeah i don't mind it i can i can sort of take it or leave it but um yeah oh you mentioned ufc there well the beast brock lesnar obviously is a very better watch as well and the rock i've got to mention Dwayne without yeah people want to move on and yeah, and the tribal course. chief roman reigns of course of course, yep. well, you can't forget those two, can you, mate? No. Absolutely. But uh, look, let's let's talk a little bit of St Kilda because we know that you're a really passionate St Kilda man. There's been a bit of change in the coaching department this year. So mm. Ross DeVos has obviously made his way back to St Kilda. Firstly, just wanted to maybe hear your thoughts on what you think of the appointment of Ross and is that mm. a positive thing for the club going forward? Yeah, I love it. I do. I I had a, had a mini campaign in a, in a way when I did 
my weekly vlogs for the St Kilda games or even midweek comments. And uh, I said, right and hashtag right now. It needed to happen. He had no plan B. And I was just getting sick and tired of the same old formula happening, bombing it to Max King over his head. It was so predictable, just kicking to him all the time. It was getting really frustrating. And people can say the goal king cost us games. Yeah, it did sometimes. But, I mean, they're kicking the ball over his head all the time, being too predictable and uh, can't blame Max King for everything. So, yeah, Ratton had to go. The team selection plays in certain positions. Josh Battle playing out of position. Brad Hill was playing out of position. I mean, he had to go and he wouldn't change the side. And if he did, he'd take out the same people every week. So it's the same 20 would play and the same two would go out. And, yeah, it wasn't good enough. And... And Ross is a great replacement for Brett Ratton. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I really like the appointment as well. I really like mm. the appointment as well. We know that he's a bit of a master coach. Do you think he's yeah. going to bring more of a defensive game plan like he sort of mm. brought in the past? Or do you think maybe, you know, after a bit of time out of the game, he may be changing mm. up to possibly more of even of attacking game style, do you think, Scoops? Yeah. He mentioned in his, I think it was his, um, I don't think it was the appointment press conference, but I think it was one of the next interviews he did after that. He said he's not going to play that type of old style he used to play. He might bring it into, you know, certain parts of a game if it's late in the game and they're ahead or something. But he said, no, they want to play more attacking brand. And he's actually said that a few times now in the last few months. So um, even Corey Enright, one of the defense, defended coaches, said the same thing. So now they're going to play a different style to what he used to coach back then. And, uh, no, nah, I can't wait to see him in charge. In the 150th year, it's not surprising that they chased Ross and uh, got him out of his gig at Channel 9 and uh, radio gigs and uh, got him back on the coaching bandwagon. I love the move. He's the boss yeah, for a reason. <laughs> is Ross the boss Ross gonna, Is he going to enforce tagging again? Would you expect to see Jack Steele go back into a tagging role despite how good of an uber midfield he actually is? Yeah, well, Steele, he actually was asked this not too long ago as well, and he actually said he doesn't want to go back to that role but if that's what Ross wanted him to do he you know he would but I think more would be a matchup type thing I suppose I don't think it would be anywhere near a weekly tag thing and Marcus Winhag has been another one being mentioned about doing that yeah. similar type of role with Rats he did that mm -hmm. role as well so he could be the one that does that but I wouldn't say either of those two would do it you know full time it just probably depends on who they're playing and even if it's going into the game they might not plan to but if someone's getting running a muck on somebody and they'll then they might do it but I don't think they'll do it full time no yeah. Well, you did mention steel there, Spills. Now, Scoops, we, we've had a bit, bit of different information coming through regarding Jack Steele at the moment. Now, there was a little bit of talk that at training he was wearing the yellow cap, which is obviously mm. no contact. Can you give us a bit of an update? Do you know what his current health status is like and possibly why he had that yellow hat on during some of the match sims and training? Was that, very, was that this week just gone, was it, that he had that on? I think it was a couple of weeks ago the news came think, through. Yeah. But then some people have said, look, he's still on light duties. Other people have mm. said, no, he's actually been involved in match sim. We're, we're just yeah. finding it really difficult to get a definitive <laughs> yeah, answer he was, about how he's actually going at the moment, mate. Yeah, he was in match sim. I think it was, oh, what day was it? Uh, what day was today? Sunday. I think, it, I think they had to match sim on Thursday or Friday, and he was a part of that. And if he wasn't in that one, he was on the most recent one, which would have been within the three days, so probably the Monday as well. So, nah, I think he's all fine. And if he was not participating, it wouldn't be from an injury. Um, not that they've told us any of that. I think he's fine. He's just probably getting a light and load. It might be his part time of the week where he's uh, having lighter duties and just happened to fall on the match sim day, something like that. I think he'll be, he's fine. I haven't heard nothing, no. He uh, seems fine. He was training this week. You've been going to a lot of trainings, obviously, Scoop. Does he look fit when he's running around? Like, is there anything to suggest that he might not be 100%? Uh, no. Nah, well, the last time I physically went to Moravian was just late. Their last session before the break. So I haven't, I've seen footage and everything like that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I haven't heard nothing that he's not in form or nothing. But uh, when I did last see him a month ago, or late December, he was in Ripper Nick, and I had seen him not too long before that as well. So, yeah, he, uh, he seems to be going fine, and he's had a different haircut. I know that for a fact. He's got a buzz <laughs> yeah, cut at the moment. Right. Oh, I wasn't happy. I wasn't. No. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I was. I was a big fan of the hair. What What are your yeah. thoughts? You, you can tell I've I've got a bit of growth myself here, so you know I may be a little bit biased. But no, I agree with you. I I don't like buzz cuts, and uh, I'm sorry, mm. Steely and Roe Marshall's just uh, donned that same haircut, so can't say wow. I'm a fan of that to be honest. They can do what no, they want, but I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I'm with you, mate. I'm absolutely with you there and completely yeah. understandable. It's funny. When we talk about Steel and, and Supercoach, usually when we look at the highest price in Kilda player, it usually mm. is Jack Steel. But this year, 
He's actually not the most expensive player we can select. It's actually Jack Sinclair in our defensive yeah. line. Had a ripping year last year. I actually had him in my side myself. I love the mullet, just the way they got the one-twos, really attacking out the defensive line there. Took a lot of the kick-ins as well. Mm. Do you think that he can back up the year that he had last year, Scoop? So do you think that things mm. may change for him, possibly in even a bit of a different role under Ross this year, mate? I think he'll play the same type of player. That there's been talk. They've been talking about themselves about uh, Liam Soccer, who obviously was one of the preseason signings for the Saints. He is going to play alongside Jack Sinclair on the halfback line. Was their words, not mine. So I'm going by that. That he's going to play the same role. And uh, yeah, no, I think he'll score the same as well. I think he'll get his odd thirty possessions all the time. And uh, the good thing for him, his ball use is good. It's not like he's just getting the kickouts and just kicking. And his his ball use is efficiency is pretty high as well. So that's what gets him the good scores. And I think he'll play the same role and be terrific again, hopefully all Australian again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of him as a player and really, mm. really did break out into really the, the uber elite status in regards even the super coach. But I think the yeah. AFL competition in general, you know, just took the competition by storm last year. So massive, massive fan of the pick. There's another bloke in defence as well. Don't know what your thoughts are on him. Had a bit of an injury plague career up to date. Some really unlucky injuries, things like a broken jaw. Just terrible luck for the young fella. And it's Hunter Clark. So he's obviously coming at, at what we call a mid-price this year. What do you think about Hunter Clark, Scoops? And what role do you think mm. he may look to play coming into this year? Uh, for, for In terms of a role, I think he may play... Well, it's, I think he'd be one they wanted to play a bit more wing, midfield type role. But I just don't see the fit in there with Crouch and... Steely and if Filippo's going to push through there and a few other guys as well, Zach Jones, if he's in the side. So it's an interesting role for him. I think he, he obviously played, again, all over the place when he wasn't injured or concussed. He had played a half-back wing as well. So I think they still haven't seemed to find a role for him, but I think they're talking about a bit more midfield or wing. But I, I don't see how that'll work in terms of the mix of the side. If they're going to have, you know, Steele and Crouch and people like that, Zach Jones and others pushing through there as well. So it's going to be interesting, I think. In terms of selecting him, though, I think he might be one to keep an eye on for the one or two practice matches or the one unofficial and official practice match would be one to keep an eye on for him. I think that'll be the guide to see how he's going to score. What's his, do you know his exact price? Around the 350 odd, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know the exact price. 315,000. He is, yeah. 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 Well, definitely one to keep an eye on. Just pretty much price. an overpriced rookie price, pretty much. Or just over yeah. that. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an awkward price, isn't it? And, and and again, a lot of it does come down to roll. Spills, any other yeah. defenders that you may be interested in from the Saners this year, mate? There is one sort of pod that I've had up my sleeve, Scoops. I've kept this one relatively yeah. quiet, but yeah. Hunter Clark really is going to look, look, he might might move into the midfield. And if he does, yeah. someone's got to take that spot off half back. Yes. I'll tell you what, mate, this bloke is, when I say super pod, he is an absolute genuine super pod. Don't, I, you probably think I'm insane, but Benny mm -hmm. Patton, mate, I absolutely yeah. love the boat. His disposal is absolutely elite. I, I love watching him. Got a bit of a, a silent man crush on the bloke. And what I <laughs> like about this selection is his durability is going to be super. He'll just score you a 70 or 80 every single week. He just won't let you down. And mm. also, we've got Ali Yo for around that same price. He's about 10K more, but 42% okay. of teams. And the bloke's made of glass, let's be honest. I, I yeah. actually reckon he's. I'd rather go against the tide. And at that price, mate, I, I'm yeah. actually tempted. What, what, are you, what are your thoughts on Benny Patton as a selection? And am I outrageous for even suggesting it? Because at the moment, mate, he's actually mm. my D3. So, yeah. there's Number one. three. D3, now, when, yeah. Got... Let's put it this way. It's not like a bad call, like selecting Michael Walters in the past. He's driven me nuts over the time. So he's done mm. for getting selected. Uh, Pato, um, I think he'll be in the side because... Jimmy Webster's had some injuries as well. Pato did as well. Exactly. And if Hunter Clark yeah. is playing backline, it, it might kind of stuff up his security in the side. I think he'll be in the team. Um, just yeah. depends on where Hunter Clark and people like that play. I wouldn't say it's the worst call at all. No. Um, and I'm sure he's around the 300k as well. So wouldn't be the worst. Well, he's a good yeah. kicker of the ball, especially last year. He did improve that a lot. So I wouldn't say it's the worst shot. I'm not looking at him. But again, yeah. if his preseason form is pretty good, if he scores those 80s, um. Yeah, but the only problem I would have with him, though, he probably could have that odd game where he could score the 40s, which would yeah, uh, scare me away from him. But if he can keep getting 70s every week, then 
at that price, it's just pretty much as I said, a rookie type Absolute of price. Absolute steal, mate. Absolute steal. Mm -hmm. If not for classic, maybe draft. You know, just someone. Yeah, draft could be that. definitely one to look for oh, on there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd bank that. What are your thoughts on Patton Dr? Would you go there? Jeez, what a what a potentially sneaky pod. You may be onto their spills, mm. Paddo. I've, I've got, I don't know. I'm a bit nervous, but. Well, are you sorry? You mentioned Elliot Yo too before. Uh, I know it's not St Kilda related, but uh, yeah, I got a friend of mine at cricket. He's been pumping up Elliot Yo, going, hey, "This is the year. This is the year." I said, "Mate, he's injury prone. Yeah. He's probably going to play every three weeks and get rested for a week here." And Ed like Joel so we did last season, and uh, it would just drive me nuts. And that's not taking into account if he gets injured again. So you said, "Oh, but he's playing yeah. mid. He's playing mid." I said, "I ain't touching him." And now I say that now, and two months later, I'll have him in my team. But uh. Yeah, I probably <laughs> want to stay away from him. I don't want to take that gamble, especially even if he's not injured. I still think he's going to get rested every so often. I agree with that, 100%. Yeah. And here's another thing, Scoops. I, I obviously <laughs> am in a situation where I don't have that much in the salary cap and and Patton's just a little bit more than, yo, I'm about 6K okay. short. Is it worth chopping a Tom Mitchell type and going down <laughs> to um, – who is there any like discounted St Kilda mids? Like, is Dan Hanbury still in the team? Like, what's his price? No, he's done. Hanner's he's done. Yes, yeah. wasn't sure. He was he's yeah, retiring, team. and I could see why you get mistaken for that because his last game he got the three Brownlow votes. And see, the problem yeah. with Hanner's when he was playing, he was very good when he played. He was just unfortunately injured too much. He his last game, I think yeah. he kicked a goal and had thirty touches. So, yeah, mm. no, so, some midfielders though, he probably. I don't know what Brad Crouch, if you're going to talk about it's cheaper than Tom Mitchell, I would assume mm. Brad Crouch is cheaper if it could yeah. help you get someone else that you want to get, like Pato or something like that. Um, yeah. If it was a St Kilda kind, he could be one. I'm assuming he's around the Tom Mitchell price. I would assume he'd be a bit less than him, but not sure how much. But he could be one if it means you get someone else you really want if you're 6K short or something like that. I actually really yeah, like Brad like like Crouch. The Billings. Billings, Mr. Yeah. Billings. Yeah, JB. I think he's for him to go back. cheaper. Yeah. yeah, he's been injured a lot, and uh, he did get dropped a couple of times or one or two times the last two years. But uh, no, as I mentioned, JB, one of my uh, mixture of favourites. Hopefully, he can get back to him. I, I don't like the talky cops because of the where he was drafted and everything like that. I mean, that's yeah. got nothing to do with him. That's on the recruiters, and even then, that's the past. And uh, he's still performing pretty well when he's played. He's just been injured this year and had a few inconsistencies and. The years before that, he was still very good. It was just people comparing who was the pick beside him. And uh, just because of how he's done doesn't mean JB hasn't done well as well. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Really, really do rate Billings. Absolutely mm. super, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, Spills, there's only one more bloke that may be a potential cheapie in the back line. And he comes at around 200K this year, Scoops. And it's Nick Caulfield. Mm. So we've talked about mm -hmm. blokes like Hunter Clark, obviously. Spills' his man in, in, in Paddo there as well. Uh, Caulfield's the cheapest out of the lot. We know that he yeah. was an early type draft pick. He was. What do you think about Caulfield? Obviously injured last year, which is, again, why he comes at a cheaper price this year. Mm. Could you see a spot for him regularly in the 22 this year? Or is he sitting maybe on the fringe and maybe mm. not worth the selection? It depends who you talk to. You talk to some fans, they say they love him, and some fans say he's no good. And I'm kind of in that bucket of not that good. Um, okay. But in saying that, my opinion doesn't mean he doesn't get picked. Um, but he, he mm. would be on the uh, – depends. He is a medium-sized defender. So depends if people like Tommy Highmore are in the team who can play a bit more taller, the cough's a bit more shorter. So it depends, like, I suppose, who you're playing. But you probably fit in the team. They'll probably start him. and uh, Or they might – I don't know. He's a tough one, actually. I'm not so confident whether he definitely starts. If he starts, he probably stays in. I think if he's someone that's not named straight away – he could find it hard to get in regularly. It might be one of those backups if someone's injured in that position. Uh, but at yeah. that price, again, like with some of the guys we mentioned in the back line, if he plays and if he gets around 16 touches a game at a rookie price, basically, I mean, it could work. But mm. he's probably another one I would stay clear of purely because of him being uh, inconsistent in form and on that cusp of being the last picked off, first one out. Yeah, I think... Patton's just a little bit ahead of him, isn't he? Yes, I agree. Like, yeah. Not much more, too. So, clearly, yeah, I like the justification there. I'd, I'd much rather pick Patton over Caulfield. And that's a that's a mm. real interesting one because he has been quite talked about, uh, uh, Caulfield. At the he has, yeah. Time. Very, very yeah. Uh, relevant player around this time of the season. Well, let's go to move on to, like, the midfield. Now, obviously, we sure. just touched on Jack Steele. 
he was the only one that we really had on the list because like he's a, he's a real like uber style but we'll, we'll touch on your boy Filippo. so at the moment i have josh bruce at f6 for 160k playing an intercept marking role instead mm. of Filippo, who's around the same price maybe try and so i want to see if you can convince me to pick Filippo Mateus over Bruce and why is he going to be a good scorer and and what role are the Saints going to play him yeah well in terms of and speaking about another ex of Bruce he actually he was one of my favorites when Brucey was there and then yeah, uh, that's right. they, they treated him very poorly on the way out and he gave him he actually got given a swipe on the at the bean I don't know if you realize that but on the nah. actually it was the year after so I don't know what year he left let's just say it was 2018 the 2019 bean F they gave him the doctor or one of the medicos or something whoever spoke at the bnf that year gave him a swipe on the way out and he uh let's say when i mentioned it to him he wasn't too pleased about it and uh oh. yeah brucey um with the bulldogs they're talking about him playing in the back line now i know his name is a forward and super coach but uh that i don't know again they've got a lot of conundrums with the, who they play in what position who misses out because they've got too many tools that they're playing like darcy does he play back forward you got hagan as he's starting the team you got norton you would assume he plays four, but can play back. Mm. There's so many plays in that. Now, obviously, they've got Liam Jones. And uh, exactly. obviously, they've got Ryan Gardner as well. And Alex Keith. So, it's yep. very hard to know who's going to fit where. And if Brucey even fits in, there's talk about that he might not start. If he does, again, at that price, again, I suppose like Caulfield, if he starts, he probably stays in. Um, but if he doesn't start, he could be one of those places stuck in the twos for so long. Um, but, yeah, yeah oh, that's probably why... I'd automatically choose Filippo over Bruce if he doesn't start for that reason alone. And Filippo, I would assume he starts round one. He had a little niggle a couple of weeks ago, but um, he's fine now, yeah. so it was nothing major. And um, what oh, yeah, Filippo, that, sorry? It, sorry, what? Sorry, cut you in there. What? 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 What niggle was that for Filippo? What? What sort of happened there? I think I didn't see. It. I just read it somewhere. Uh, I think it yeah. was a, it was a hamstring. It wasn't hand or shoulder or nothing like. That. I think it was a leg injury. I don't know what form. I guess is as good as mine. That was that leg injury, um, but nothing major because I think he was training on. I think he's training next week or Monday, whenever they start. So yeah, yeah okay. I think he'll be fine. And, uh, and there's been no talk about it being severe. It was just on a couple of fans, people that were there watching that he was not participating or something, or had tape on his leg or something like that. But uh, I think he'll be fine. And again, all we know, it could have been one of those, as I said, with um, Steely before with those road. Uh, time off during the week and managing their loads i'm going to assume it was something like that maybe as well but uh yeah philippo over bruce i would say if he starts round one he can play forward mid as i mentioned earlier so he could be one of those plays where he could uh pop up kept, have 15 touches kicked a couple of goals a game so um and then that would get you yeah. what about 80 odd points potentially if his efficiency is high as well and there's goal assists involved so i would say philippo over brucey yeah, you mentioned Jamara Sorry before, and how the dogs are talking about him being the next buddy. Is Mateus <laughs> Filippo going to be the next Bon and Pally? And we, we all know what Bon and Pally did in his, in his first year. So yeah. the expectations It's funny, too. They're both left player. footers as well. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And they're both similar Larry. height and similar uh, body size as well. So it's, uh, yeah, that'd be nice. And I mean, that at least we can make a one all, then I suppose, in that debate that people carry on about for still to this day. Not yep. feelings as well, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to change to a different line now. And there's only really sure. one bloke that I want to talk about here in the ruck, and that is Rowan Marshall. So obviously, Paddy Ryder, you've thanked you for his service. He's gone mm. into retirement now. There's a few tools yeah. that are actually under injury clouds down yes. there at Rabin at the moment, which is a little bit unfortunate. But what do you think about Rowan Marshall this year, Scoops? Do you think he's going to be clearly mm. the number one ruck and then someone else is going to chop him out for maybe 15, 20% of the time. Yeah. I think Rowan Marshall will certainly uh, be the number one ruck. I think he'll be the solo ruck. And he'll do love their ruck duos. They've had, obviously, we mentioned Ryder and Marshall. I think in the last game of last year, Tommy Campbell um, rucked with, uh, yeah, he did with Rowan Marshall and he, he did pretty well. That split, Tommy Campbell's coming back from an Achilles injury. They said he might not start training properly until in March. So I think Marshall, yeah, and with Jack Hayes injured as well, I think, Marshall would definitely be the sole ruck for the whole game. They might have Cooper Sharman or Josh Battle. They seem to love putting undersized ruckmen in the ruck. That's another thing Rats did, which I didn't like. Uh, but yeah. I don't know if Ross will do that, but they have been training Mitch Owens as a uh, ruckman at training the last few weeks when they had no ruck. Yeah. And when Roel Marshall had wow. a training session off, Mitch Owens was uh, doing the ruck work against uh, young ruck Max Hayes. So <laughs> it was very interesting to see that. So he might be the pinch hitter, it looks like. 
He can play up forward as well. Do you imagine you get ruck status? That would be, I, t- I tell you what, a, a big surprise. That, that's great information, Scoop. I tell you, yeah. what do you think, Bill? Has you got uh, Rowan in your side at the moment, mate? Locked and loaded? Yeah, I, I'm locking in Rowan, boys. I, I just think, yeah, the value is mm. just really good. The upside's nice. No rider in the team. Hayes has gone down. With, uh, another ACL, wasn't it? Which is, that's just um. Uh, he had a, not another ACL. He had a um. He, his first injury was an ACL. His second one, yeah. I think. What was his shoulder, I think, and he's in doubt for round one. They think more round two, three at this stage. Um, so yeah. I, and I don't think they'd rush in considering he was going. He was just finishing his ACL recovery when that happened. So yeah. shoulder injury cool. training. He can't get a run, can he? Just no, like, and he yeah, he would be the backup ruck. I would assume all fit and firing. He'd be that pinch hit ruck and play forward as well. Tommy mm. Campbell would be a chance when he comes back. Um, but I thought Tommy Campbell personally could be. Well, if Tom Campbell's fit before round one, I feel like they could. I don't think they will. They could, though, pick him and play Rowan Marshall as the forward with Max Hing out in the meantime. So Rowan Marshall's a pretty capable forward as well. So Tom mm. Campbell will be the key. If he's in the side round one, I would expect Marshall to play more forward. So that could be one. Of, mm. I don't think it'll happen, though. But if it does, that'd be one to watch. But I think yeah, he's a lock, as you mentioned, Spilsey, for my... Uh, Ruckman, I mentioned before, stay away from Gordon Grundy. I haven't been doing that the last few years anyway. So, um, yeah, I've got Roe Marshall and not even Max Gorn. Jared Witts I've got at the moment. So, I'll have him Whitty. too. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Well, yeah, yeah, the two com- Ruck combos. Yeah, what we might even, even do now, Scoops, is even quickly talk a little bit of strategy before we let you go because we know you are a very, very busy man. And again, yeah, we right. really appreciate you, you coming on and giving us some of your time. But I don't know if, how many people know this, but if we take a look back to Supercoach Round 5, of last year, you had a pretty decent week. Could you tell us what happened round five for you, super coach wise in 2022? Yeah, I just casually uh, won the 2K weekly prize uh, for, for being a subscriber. Um, yes, yeah, got 2,557, I believe it is. I think that's what it that is, is. But I mean, if I've got the number wrong, at least I got it right back then. So, um, oh, you got yeah, I was grand. pretty pumped. It matter. <laughs> that's what I had. I had um, some of my mates and family messaging me and they're like oh did you win the weekly prize said, what do you want about a one weekly prize i knew i'd gone really well that round because i was checking it game by game as i normally do and one of the family men said i think you won i said don't lie to me and then one of my mates starts spamming me with messages going how did you win this and i'm like okay now i'm getting more yeah. people sending me this i'm gonna double check this because the one ha- one time i didn't look for half an hour after the game i'm like now i'm getting spammed with messages all over my <laughs> facebook page too i thought this must be legit. So I had to look. Yeah, and then yeah. when I opened it up, it said, congratulations, you won, you know, your um, league wins and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then it says what I scored, top 1%. I thought, oh, good. And then I seen the um, round rank at one. I thought, what the, you know what? And um, yeah. <laughs> but Jesus Christ, I've won it. And then I had to refresh it to make sure it wasn't a glitch. And uh, <laughs> no, after the second time, I thought, you beauty. So let's start bragging. I'll tell you what, what sort of outrageous pods did you have in your side to get the edge over every other super coach in Australia? Like, what, what got you over the line, mate? Who scored well for you in round five? Yeah, I I have to thank Jack Hayes from the Saints as well. And I mentioned on another yeah. guy's podcast around that time, I could thank Jack Hayes. I think St Kilda, if, I don't know exactly. I think it was the game we played GWS in Canberra on the Friday night. And... I think Essendon were playing on the yeah. Saturday. So Nick Martin was the other guy I had. I um mm. I look, had Jack Hayes as the uh, emergency on the fo- in the forward line, and he'd scored. I said to myself, if he scores a 70, 80 odd, I'm going to take it. I think he got seventy one. So I was like, you know, oh, that's it's a rookie, Nick Martin. I think uh, that was after one of those games where he had those kick those five against Geelong. They had twenty five touches. So I'm like. Do I really want to do this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Saint. I personally think I take, took the score because he was yeah. the Saint. I thought, oh, well, 71 is still pretty good for a rookie. Nick Martin, yeah, he started well, and I'm, I'm not sure. And then I thought, Lara, I, I looped. I don't know who the person I looped hole was. Um, and then Nick Martin scored eight runs less. Oh, sorry, eight runs. So I'm still in cricket mode. Eight points <laughs> less. Eight points less. And um, uh, luckily I done that move because. Yeah, as I said, Nick Martin scored eight points less, and I eight points less, and then I think I won the weekly prize by three points. Oh, so had I not wow. taken Jack Hayes and went wow. for the non-saint, I wouldn't be two K richer. Um, so thank you, Jack Hayes. 
Mm. You, no one's you played rewarded this and killed a passion. Absolutely well deserved. There, you backed your heart. You went the saner, and yeah. he did not let you down. So I suppose he'd be he a didn't. very special player in your books, just because of he that is. round five as well, Scoops. That's <laughs> right. I actually met Jack Case for the first time actually in that December that open training, and I should have told him. I forgot all about it. Next time I see him, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you have, you have to give, give it a thank you. Now, That's how right. about, uh, look, lots of people ask the question: How many people can you select? From the one side mm. in Supercoach, you know, is it yeah. three, four, five or more? I know that some people that maybe haven't played for a while may just stack their whole side with players from oh, their yeah. favourite team. But look, in regards to strategy-wise, do you have a bit of a, a limit or a number on the maximum yeah. amount of players that you tend to select from the one side scoops? Yeah, I, I've always said do never never select uh, key defenders or key fours. There's a few exceptions like a Tom Stewart or... Maybe even this year, Jeremy Cameron. Uh, but there's not many mm-hmm. key forwards or key defenders. I would touch, like, um, off the top of my head, I'm not saying these players are bad or nothing, but in terms of super coach, you don't touch, like Alex Pierce or uh, Dougal Howard, people like that. You do not touch them. This is a waste. It's going to score 40 and waste your side's done. And in terms of numbers, never select more than four players from the one side. I mean, people say, oh, let's go 20 players of Geelong plays, for example. Oh, but they're a good side. Well, I don't think people realise if you pick... I think the maximum points you can get, I think, for a club, is I think it's around, was it 14 to 1,600 range? And regardless, that's not winning you any weekly prize. So that's just dumb to do moves like that. So, yeah, four would be the max. I mean, personally, when I started doing my um, side for this year or, and last year, I think, I think it was this year or last year, I can't remember, uh, I ended up having six Collingwood players in my draft. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll get this guy. Oh, yeah, Jack Crisp, I'll get him. And I'm like... Oh, damn it. I've got six already. I thought, crud. I'll get rid of one. So I got rid of someone. Then I picked a go. I thought, nah, that's a great move. And I thought, oh, crap. That's another Collingwood <laughs> player. So yeah, do not. But I didn't start. I won't start with that, obviously. So I'm like, do not get more than four. And I've had mates to do that in the past. I said, well, your side's automatically done. So don't do that. Scoops, you touched on you, you touched on the golden rule. Don't kick, ke- don't pick key forwards and and key defenders. But yeah. I hear a rumor that Tim Membry is one of your favorite players. Could you yeah, him, I forgot mate? to mention him. Is there, yeah. is there a sneaky shot at the Coleman this year? And does he present a little bit of value in our forward lines? With King Dan. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, Timmy, remember, I'm going to assume I should have looked at his price up. I think it's in the 450 range, I'm going to assume. It's not over 500, I would think. So, I mean, nah, he would be well. certainly one to look at. Uh, yes, I do like Timmy Member. He's a great player. He's very underrated. He was so good when Brucey was there. Me mentioned Brucey again. Him and Bruce were yeah. fantastic together. Then obviously he's been with King. He's done well. Timmy, remember, he's ultra reliable, ultra consistent, can take a good bloody pack mark, can kick straight. It seems to be the pattern now with some secure plays these days too and other clubs, mm. but especially thinking where they kick goals better from the boundary or from 50 out than they do 10 metres out from the goal square. So, uh, no, Timmy, memory would be actually a really good pick. And over time, I've actually thought about taking him and I'm actually might – I haven't got him right now. But uh, especially with King out, is, how much, sorry? He's 417K. And I'll tell you what, overlooked as well. 0% ownership. I mean, this yeah. bloke isn't getting anywhere near the respect he probably deserves. No is that right there? No, he doesn't. He, yeah. he gets no every game, he's getting about 15 possessions. And if, if there's one thing that I want to tempt people to, to consider him, he does go, like going in the back line late in quarters, taking the uh, pack marks and having the oh, being the uh, extra defender too. So... And he does do that pretty well. So if you want an extra 20-odd points per game if he's doing it every quarter, um, and if he kicks three goals a game and getting 15 touches, I mean, now exactly you yeah, right. you probably convinced me to do the move right now and take whoever I've got in there. Um, no, I, I was going to consider him anyway. And if he – it'll be one to keep an eye. Like, if there's someone in these price range, I'm like, oh, I need to get someone, oh, he'd probably be the one I pick in that range. Surely he's a forward. Yeah. Well, if you pick him over Taranto, you'd be saving over 80K. At like yeah, F three or four, which is Whereas if you pick over Dunkley, Dunkley, how much how much you saving then on someone like a Dunkley? For example, That's right. I've have got Dunkley mm-hmm. at the moment, but I'm sh- like most people do. But um, yeah, no, Timmy Membry. I mean, again, if they obviously Membry's not going to score as much as Dunkley. Tarano, who knows? Um, especially if he plays more mid, though, he might. But um, you know, mm. if you're going to pay an extra hundred k for someone that might only score ten points more, I mean, I don't see what's the point of doing that for, especially if they're going to be inconsistent as well. But yeah, memories definitely want to keep an eye out on. You heard it here, folks. Absolutely, Tim Membry. Well, uh, look, uh, Spills, is there anything else, uh, any other players or anything else strategy-wise that you wanted to bring up with this great man 
before we let him go on his way? Yeah, I've got one more for you, Scoop. So, um, sure. This is a rookie, just a little cheeky shout. So Ollie Hotton, he was a second rounder, I'm pretty sure, for you guys. Does he have a chance of, of getting an early debut? Um, what are your uh, thoughts on him? I would I actually don't mind. I actually liked the pick. I thought he was a bit, a bit of a steal at his pick. It was talked about in the round, the pick 20 range, when I mean, the Giants had a few of those multiple picks, and then he fell yeah. out. I think it was to around 40-odd. Then I think it has this oh, was it stress fracture in his back or his foot, so they don't expect him to be playing until mm -hmm. very late in the season, after, well after the bye. So uh, they haven't yeah, put him yeah. on the inactive list, so it might not be as bad as that, but he's not expected to be playing for at least four months from now. So uh, okay. had he not been injured, he would have been one that I was definitely looking at too, especially if he was named round one. But um, yeah. And Ross would like his small forwards, if, and Butler and Higgins have been a bit inconsistent at times, so um, he could be in that conversation. He could have played with them too as well. So um, when he comes yeah. back from injury, I, I think they'll leave him in this year. But next year, Definitely want to keep an eye out on Ollie Hotton. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. Wasn't aware of that injury. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, they don't publicise it much, to be honest. So I don't, I don't uh, progress. That's why we got you on, mate. Because you're the first eyes at training. We can get all the off-field reports from you. So everything's safe. You can see these articles, and then at the last sentence of the thing, oh, yeah, Ollie Hotton out for four months. Oh, okay. You have the whole yeah, article yeah, talking right. about random stuff, and at the bottom they sneak it in and tell you, yeah, he's out for four months. Oh, okay, no worries. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because one thing I've noticed, I reckon this has happened a couple of times. I've seen something up that Scoops has posted, and then what? Mm. Ten minutes now later, even a little while later, these other so-called journalists <laughs> have it up claiming it as themselves. Yeah, like, it's funny. I'll spill the beans on some of this. I'll spill the beans. Pun the nickname. There's spill the beans. Um, <laughs> Comedy and, gold um, as well. <laughs> since you had the Travis Head one, I'll, I'll put one into the table now. Um, but yeah, spill the beans on uh, some of the journos. I won't name them, but because uh, I might get a bit touchy and they might end up messaging me again. But uh, um, no, some no, of them no. got really upset. They're like, oh, you haven't uh, credited me. But for examples like that, where I've had it say 10 minutes before, I'm like, it's not a thing to brag about. But like, okay, I've had it first and let it go. And then 10 minutes later, they'll message me. Oh, how come you haven't credited me? Like, for example, I'm actually going to name someone here. Cal Toomey, I actually respect him. But last year's, not this trade period, just gone, the previous trade period, the night before I got told Luke Bruce was, or well, GWS were interested in Luke Bruce, which was eventuated publicly, it was known. And GWS had said that themselves after the trade period. And that, I don't know what night it was. Let's just say it was a Tuesday night I posted. It. And Wednesday afternoon, mind you, almost 24 hours later, Cal wrote the exact same thing, that GWS won him. He's thinking about it. GWS want him. And uh, I said to Cal, I said, what happened here? And, but in the past, Cal and Mitch Cleary and others like that have messaged me asking the same thing and said, oh, I haven't credited me. Well, that's a prime example. And and plus, I name their names at the bottom of the thing anyway or at the top sometimes. But it's very hypocritical. And some of the times they say is you're not an accredited media. But, I mean, if you had something, for example, and you had it first and I've seen it, or even if it, I didn't see it, you tell me and show me that. Oh, of course I'll say, no worries, you had it first, all good. But they Absolutely. don't like it the other way around. They want you to credit them, but the other way around, no. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> and that's why, you know, we wanted to get get you on, mate, because as I said, we mm. really respect everything they do, your hot takes, your scoops. Mm. You know, always look forward to scoops goes bang. You know that something yeah. exciting is, is, is coming up there, mate. Can you tell us before we let you go, have you got anything sort of coming up, Um, any particular topics to your podcast, anything that you, you, you'd yeah. like to sort of promote while you're here, bud? Yeah, sure. So AFL information, trade rumors and results on YouTube, almost on 2K, about 80, K, 80 subs away. So go and do that and sub to these guys as oh, well. They do a group of jobs. Jump on, jump on. Exactly. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I've I've done a lot of cricket vlogs. I don't know if you've seen any of them. Yesterday's one was short and sharp. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, what I will do at the end of the season is I, at the BNF, I'll, I do a vlog for, I did a vlog for the BNF last year, not as much details in it because I performed pretty well, but they kind of rushed through it. This year, I'm a chance to win it with 15 wickets with three games to go. Um, should be winning it. So, sure. Now, I say that now and I'll somehow lose. <laughs> um, but, uh, I will be vlogging that entire night too. So that'd be a good vlog and I might get someone to film my, film me reacting to it or I might do it myself. So we'll see what happens. So that'll be one vlog to keep an eye on. And any interviews I get with coaches place. Yeah. I had Craig McRae on twice, as you mentioned earlier. So, uh, that was probably the yeah. best interview to add on. So yeah, some more cricket vlogs and when the footy season starts, kick it to will come back in probably after the preseason game start. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there and 
Tune in to these guys who want all these super edge goals. Unreal stuff, oh, mate. Ma- much appreciated, mate. Much appreciated. As you said, mate, we um we're actually a little bit nervous having you on, not, not mm-hmm. because we thought he's, he's let's call famous on Facebook. You know, he's yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah. A big You're a massive you know. personality in the AFL world. Everyone knows Appreciate you. It. I've been following your yeah. Facebook page, Spotty, since I was like 16, I reckon. I've always yeah. I've always dabbled in. Yeah, I love the content. It's funny. Yeah, it's great. Keep doing what you're doing, Legend. And um, yeah, I'm glad I met you. And um, thanks for All coming right. on. Buddy, hey, thanks for having me on, guys. No, it's been great, and hopefully again, mate, we, we'd love to have you on again one day. Of and all the best of luck with repeating what you did in round five last year. I tell you what, if you could get another number one round score this year, <laughs> we're going to build a statue of you somewhere, Scoop. I think. Like, build the man a statue. Build sounds, scoop sounds good. A statue. <laughs> I like that going. idea. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Not a problem, mate. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, obviously, big thanks to Scoops. Thank you, as always, uh-huh. Spills. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.